Welcome to daily editorial analysis of Shankaraj Academy. Today's topic of discussion is these two editorials. So one editorial is taken from the Indian Express newspaper. So in this editorial, we will discuss about the elephants. What is the significance of elephants in the environment and how these keystone species is helpful to maintain a balanced ecosystem. Added to that, we will also see about the conservation efforts to conserve these elephants. And in the next editorial, we will see about the bilateral relationship between Italy and India from the mains perspective detaily. Before getting into the discussion, I have an important announcement. Shankara A's Academy is going to conduct a prelims test series known as the Priest Roaming. The second batch is going to start from the 5th October, which is tomorrow. You can enroll in this course by clicking in the link given below in the description. Without further delay, let's get into today's discussion. Take a look at this editorial taken from the Indian Express newspaper. Elephants has been a magnificent and a gigantic animal in our view from the childhood. But do you know their population is on decline? Yes. The recent elephant census was taken by the Wildlife Institute of India in the year 2017 and their population is on decline, which is a major concern because these are the keystone species. We will see what is keystone species in the later slides. But the major reason for this decline is the habitat fragmentation and the rising human animal conflicts. Though this census was taken using new statistical data, this data was not discussed widely. So, this is the content discussed in this editorial. With this basis, we will see why are elephants important in the environment and what are the conservation efforts taken by the government of India to conserve them. Let's start with the main question. Explain the importance of elephants in the India's ecology and culture. What are the main threats to their habitat and conservation? Suggest ways to improve the care of both wild and captive elephants referring to the government policy. So, the first part of the question is you have to discuss why it is important. So, in this part we will see why it is called as the keystone species. And in the second one, we will see what are the threats faced by them in the environment. And lastly, we will dis discuss what are the government policies to conserve them. So, these are the three heads which we have to discuss. Let us start with the keystone species. So, elephants are called as the keystone species because they are very important to maintain the biodiversity in the environment. So, these elephants alter the habitat in such a way that it will be beneficial to the environment as a whole. For example, if an elephant is walking in the forest, they will damage the land. The, they will create a path in the forest. For example, they will create a space so that the sunlight is able to penetrate through the thick forest and reach the land. Thereby, it will help in promoting the growth of grass which will support the herbivores because the herbivores cannot rely on the forest and the large trees. They can rely only on the grass which is on the floor. So, thereby the elephants are helping the survival of the herbivores. They are also beneficial for the purpose of seed dispersal. So, this is why we say in elephants are keystone species in the environment. Elephants also have a cultural significance from the time immemorial. So, these are considered as a sacred animal, be it in the in case of ritual text or literature. But the main challenges faced by the elephants in current situation is the habitat fragmentation because of the industrial development. Now, we will see what are the basics about the elephants. So, the distribution of these elephants is mainly found in the northeast region, central India, southern India and mainly in the western Ghats. They are found in a variety of habitats starting from the tropical forest, grasslands and the scrublands. The gestation period of the elephants is about 18 to 22 months and they give, give only one calf per pregnancy. They consume almost 150 kg of vegetation daily. They consume fruits, grass, sugar canes and banana to meet the large energy requirements. According to Census of Wildlife Institute of India in the year 2017, India is one of the largest host of the wild Asian elephants, which is about 29,964 in number. 
Having seen about the basics of the elephant, now let's see the conservation efforts of Government of India to conserve the elephants one by one. First is the Project Elephant 1992. So, this is under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. It is a centrally sponsored scheme. The main aim of the scheme is to protect the elephants, its habitat and the corridors of the elephant. They will also mitigate the problems of elephant conservation such as the human-animal conflicts. So, under this, almost 32 elephant reserves were established in India across different states. They are also allowing for the establishment of barriers and the early warning system. So, talking about the early warning system, we have a system called as the elephant protection and the detection system. So, this system consists of sensors as well as camera near the railway tracks. So, whenever an elephant is passing by, these sensors will detect and thereby it will help us to prevent the elephant deaths due to the train accidents. And next we have a program called as the elephant corridors. So, elephant corridors are nothing but there is a narrow strip of land which connects two large habitats of elephant. For example, we have Mudumalai Bandipur National Elephant Corridor. So, this Mudumalai Bandipur uh, Elephant Corridor will connect these two national parks through this elephant corridor. So, under this program, almost 101 elephant corridors were identified and conserved under this program. So, this program also has a provision for a community-based conservation where the local community will participate in the conservation of the elephant corridors. So, this will help us to reduce the human-animal conflict and, and it will also help us to promote safe migration of elephants across the fragmented habitats of them. And next we have the MIKE which is the monitoring of illegal and killing of elephants. So, this program was launched under the sites and it also focuses on the monitoring of poaching as well as illegal ivory trading and they have achieved a significant success in this program because it has achieved a significant reduction in the poaching rate as well as strengthen the international cooperation for the elephant conservation and next we have the elephant task force which is established on the year 2010 under the ministry of environment forest and climate change so they will recommend strategies for the long term conservation for example the establishment of elephant conservation authority so the major successes of this task force is to establish a better monitoring system to increase the funding and to increase the integration of scientific research in the conservation of elephants. And the important act with respect to the conservation is the F Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Under this act, elephants come under the Schedule 1 because they require high legal protection to conserve them. We also have a campaign called as the Gaj Yatra campaign launched in the year 2017. So, this is launched by Government of India in collaboration with the Wildlife Trust of India. So, the main objective of this campaign is to raise the awareness regarding the conservation of elephants. So, the main success of this campaign is they have raised the awareness in the grassroots level to protect the elephant habitats and the corridors. So, in many states such as Karnataka, Odisha and Assam, compensation are given to the farmers for crop damage because of the elephant entry into their fields. So, now we will see what are the way forward to deal with the challenges with respect to the elephant conservation. First is to strengthen the habitat corridors. This we have already discussed and next we have by improving and conserving the elephant corridors, we can reduce the human animal conflicts. We can use technology such as the elephant protection and detection system, the GA, GPS collars, GAS mapping to monitor the movement of elephants and thereby reducing the human animal conflict. The role of community in the conservation of elephant is very important because 
the local knowledge about the area and the movement of elephant will be helpful in the conservation of the elephants. So, in this editorial, we saw why elephants are called as the keystone species, some basics about the elephant. We also see what are the, we also saw what are the conservation efforts which are taken to conserve the elephants such as the project elephant, elephant corridor, wildlife protection act and so on. And lastly, we ended with the way forward measures. With this, we will conclude the discussion on this editorial and now let us move on to the next one. Take a look at this editorial taken from the Hindu newspaper editorial session. So, this editorial detailly discusses about the strategic relationship between the India and Italy, especially in the Indo-Mediterranean region. It also emphasizes on the strategic relationship between both these countries, especially in the areas of defense, security and the digital connectivity. So, this editorial also mentions about the increasing presence of the Italian Navy in the Indian Ocean regions. It also says about the collaborative efforts of both the countries in the industries, defense and security. So, with this uh, editorial as basis, we will discuss, uh, discuss about the bilateral relationship between both these countries. So, let us start with the main question first. The question is, examine the significance of the Indo-Mediterranean region for the global trade and the digital connectivity. So, this is the first part of the question. We have to address the significance of this region. And second, we have how are Italy and India collaborating to enhance the regional security and to strengthen the defense ties and pursue a common development objective. So, this will be the second part of the question. So, let us start with the Indo-Mediterranean region first. So, this region is very important for the global trade and connectivity. So, this is the Indo-Mediterranean region. It includes the Indian Ocean region, the Mediterranean region as well as the region surrounding the Suez Canal. Before starting, you have to know the important choke points in this region. First, we have the Strait of Hormuz and here we have the Babel il Mandil and here we have the Suez Canal. So, for this, we have to know about the Blue Raman Submarine Cable which is going to link the Mumbai in India and Genoa in Italy. So, traditionally these system will connect through the Babel Mandel, Red Sea, Suez Canal and then Europe. But this Blue Raman Submarine Cable connectivity is going to connect Mumbai and Genoa through the Mediterranean region by bypassing this system. So, this will ensure there is more security to the digital connectivity. So, this blue ramen is nothing but blue which is a submarine cable connectivity system and ramen is given to honor the CV ramen. So, this project will boost the technical connectivity between both these countries. So, but here you have to note that the economic prosperity of the Italy is totally dependent upon the regional stability in the Mediterranean region. If there is no regional stability in this region, it will affect the Italy totally because they are dependent on this route for the global trade and the digital connectivity. So, as we know, this Indo-Mediterranean region is going to act as a bridge between Asia and Europe. Now, talking about the India and Italy bilateral relation, first is the collaborative efforts. So, both these countries are going to work together because there is a rising concern, especially in the Red Sea because there is a rise in piracy and also because of the increase of geopolitical tensions in the Mediterranean regions, especially in the Gaza and Lebanon. So, that is why both these countries are going to work together to ensure security in this region. So, the Italy has boosted the presence of Italy Navy in the Indian Ocean region. This is done by participating in the European Union naval operations such as the UNAV for Aspides. So, by participating in these military operations, they will be able to ensure and safeguard the maritime security. They will be able to ensure the freedom of navigation in the Indian Ocean region. So, uh, this Indo-Mediterranean region is also very essential for the trade between both these countries because the trade happens through this route. If there is a regional instability in this region, it might affect the trade in of both the countries. To ensure and enhance the defense cooperation among both these countries, a new defense agreement was signed in the year 
2023 October. So this agreement totally concentrates to promote the maritime security, thereby to secure the sea routes in the region. They also focus on the research and the joint collaboration of defense production for producing the defense equipments. So the Italy has also sent their key assets such as the aircraft carrier ITS Caver and a frigate named as ITS Alpino for the Indian Navy for the joint naval exercises such as the PASSEX. So by sending their expertise to equipments, they are going to promote the Navy security in the region. So they are working collaboratively to ensure the security in the maritime facility. Talking about the collaborative efforts, Italian companies such as the Fincantieri and the Leonardo are going to set their establishment in Indian soil to promote the joint venture and co-production. By this way, we are going to promote the Make in India initiative. So by technical innovation in the defense system, we are going to modernize the defense system of India as well. So now we will discuss what are the challenges with respect to the India and Italy relation. First is the piracy we already discussed. There is an increasing amount of piracy in the Red Sea region and the Indian Ocean region. So this is a threat to the digital connectivity and the trade in this region. We also know there is a rising geopolitical tension in the Mediterranean region, especially in the Gaza, Lebanon, West Asia and the Ukraine war conflict. So this problem can be addressed by joint collaboration in international forums such as the G20, BIMSTEC and UN. By having a collaborative efforts in these countries, we can resolve these issues. We know there is a trade imbalance. Italy is a major exporter than India. That is, Italy exports more than India. So we can resolve this issue by enhancing the export in case of textile and IT. There is also a bureaucratic hurdle. There is major requirements to be satisfied to conduct the export. This can be simplified to enhance the export. There is also a cultural difference between both these countries. There is a difference in the business practices. So this problem can be resolved by conducting tourism and the cultural exchange between both the countries. So having discussed about the challenges, now we will see what are the solution to deal with these challenges. First is the Indian diaspora. So, Italy has the second largest diaspora in the European Union. So, here you can see what is the significance of Indian diaspora in Italy. So, we can culturally exchange between each other which will strengthen the bond between both the nations. So, the upcoming visit of ITS Americo Vespucci to Mumbai will also improve the cultural exchange between both the countries. As already said, we can collaborate and support each other forums such as G20, BIMSTEC and Union, United Nations. We can achieve the shared commitment to global cooperation and development. So with this, we will conclude discussion on this article. In this editorial, we saw what is the relationship between Italy and India in the defense, digital connectivity, especially concentrating on both these concepts. We have come to end of today's video. If you found the video informative, do hit like. Give your feedbacks as comment and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.